the ACT matrix. This is a perspective taking exercise, a way of pausing, stepping back and noticing. This can be helpful at any time and especially when you're feeling a bit stuck. To do this exercise, you're going to need a piece of paper and a pen. So pause the video now and go and find one. And when you're ready, we'll begin. Turn the paper so that it's landscape and draw a horizontal line from the left to the right, dividing the page in half. Put an arrow at each end and above the left hand arrow, right away and above the right hand arrow, right towards. Now, imagine that here's a rabbit and they can see and smell a carrot. Would you agree that the rabbit is going to run towards the carrot? Good. Now, imagine that here's a rabbit and they can smell a dog and then they hear and see the dog coming towards them. Would you agree that the rabbit is going to run away from the dog? Right. Now, imagine that you just look out the window and you see a rabbit running. You wouldn't know, would you, whether this was a rabbit running towards or away from something. But would you agree that for the rabbit, it would feel very different in both of those situations? Same action, running, but one is towards something and one is away from something. Just notice the difference. Notice how a towards move might feel in your body and how an away move might feel. Now I want you to draw another line, this time a vertical line from the top of the page to the bottom so that you've divided the page into four boxes. At the top of this line, put an arrow pointing up and write outside and at the bottom, put an arrow pointing down and write the word inside. So the outside space is the world of our senses. All the things that we can see, hear, taste, touch and smell. And we're in this space when we see something beautiful like an amazing sunset or a lovely flower or when we taste something exquisite. It's the world of observable behaviour. So everything in this space is visible. At the other end of the line, we have the inside space. This is the world of thoughts and feelings and it goes on inside us. It's not visible to other people. This is a super helpful space to be in sometimes. Our brains are able to go back in time and remember previous experiences and also imagine how things might turn out in the future, which can help us when we're problem solving. It's really hard to be fully on the inside space and the outside space at the same time. Try to think of a time when you've been so engrossed in your thoughts that you've become oblivious to your outside space. Like when someone was talking to you and you realised you hadn't heard a word they were saying as you were planning your dinner or remembering something embarrassing you said the day before. Or you might have had the experience of driving from A to B and having no recollection of most of the journey when you arrive. Similarly, when we're fully in our outside space, our inside space often goes quiet. Try to think of a time when you've been fully present in the outside space recently. Perhaps when you ate something delicious or when you were enjoying a moment of connection with someone or perhaps with your pet. So everything above this horizontal line is the world of observable behaviour, stuff we could see you doing. And you can put a little video camera symbol up here to remind yourself that everything up here would be seen on a video recording of your life. Everything beneath the line is inside you and can't be seen. So... Rabbits and other animals tend to only move towards and away from stuff that they can see or taste, touch or smell. Stuff in the outside world. Human beings on the other hand are different and they can also be influenced by stuff that shows up inside them. Humans are the only creatures who can be somewhere physically safe, like in a warm bed with a full tummy and be in full on threat mode. And this is because we have language and we can think ourselves into danger. This is the cost of our inside space, of having language. And it's something we're going to explore using this tool. So here we have it. Two lines, towards and away, inside and outside. Just check in now and notice the difference between each of these things. 
Now we're going to start to put things into these boxes that we have in front of us. And we're going to start with the bottom right. I want you to write along the top of this box who and what is important to me. Then take a moment. Ask yourself, who really matters to me? It might be your family, friends, a pet. It can be people who are no longer alive and it can be people with whom your relationship is complicated. If something's important to you, write down the names. The order doesn't matter, by the way, so don't worry if you've put your dog's name above your parents. Then we're going to think about what is important. By this I mean, what are the qualities and values that you want to stand for in your life and in these relationships? You might ask yourself, what sort of brother or sister do I want to be? Try to step away from what sort of brother or sister you are being and imagine, if I were being my best self, what sort of sibling, partner, friend, grandchild, parent would I want to be? And just write down any words that show up for you now. You might also notice that other things show up that are important, perhaps to do with your work or a hobby, things like creativity, learning, fun and adventure. And just write down any of these words too. Now we're going to move over to the bottom left, so we're still below the horizontal line in the inside space. And the heading for this box is, what inside stuff gets in the way? So what do we mean by inside stuff? This is all the thoughts and feelings that sometimes show up and get in the way of us moving towards the bottom right. For example, you can see in the bottom right there's friends, fun and connection. Some of the inside stuff that can get in the way of this are thoughts like, you're boring, or I can't be bothered. We might also notice feelings showing up like anxiety, or sensations in the body like butterflies in the tummy, or a tired feeling. Take a moment to notice any thoughts and feelings that show up inside you, and just write them down in the bottom left. We sometimes use the expression hooked when we get caught up with a particular thought or story, it's as though we're swimming along in the direction of our values and then a thought drops down like a hook and we get pulled off course. If you're noticing some of your own hooks, write them down. Now we're going to move above the horizontal line into the world of observable behaviour. Remember, these are all the actions and behaviours we would see on a video recording of our lives. Essentially, everything above this line is our life. We're going to start top left. The heading for this box is, what would I be seen doing when I'm trying to move away from these feelings or under the control of all of those thoughts? You can see here that when I'm hooked by can't be bothered or you're boring, then you might see behaviours such as I drink more, scrolling on my phone or ignoring texts from friends. Just take a moment to notice what can you be seen doing when you're hooked by some of the stuff in your bottom left and write it down. And notice as well, what sort of things do you do when you're trying to get away from any uncomfortable feelings in the bottom left, like pain or anxiety? Write some of the things you notice yourself doing in the top left. We call all these things in the top left our away moves things we do when we're trying to move away from all that stuff in the bottom left. And now finally we're going to move to the top right, which is our towards moves. And the heading for this box is, what would I be seen doing when I'm moving towards all the things in my bottom right? For example, a towards move might be to meet a friend for a coffee or accept an invitation to a party. Take a moment now to write down some of your own towards moves that you may have done in the past few days or weeks. Just notice as you do it what it feels like to notice towards. You may find that some of the behaviours above the horizontal line can be both towards and away. For example, having a drink can be a really lovely way of having fun and relaxing with friends. So it would be top right, towards. However, it can also be a way of blocking out difficult feelings or something we do when we're hooked by self-critical thoughts. And then it would be top left, away. So it's the same behaviour, but it will feel very different depending which side it's on. So it's okay to write something on both sides. Just notice the difference. Now I'm going to invite you to just take a look at the paper in front of you. 
and as you do so, just draw a small circle in the middle of the page where the lines cross. Inside this circle, write me noticing. It's almost as though this circle is hovering above the page. And from this vantage point, you can look down and notice. Notice who and what really matters to you. And notice all the stuff that shows up sometimes and gets in the way of you moving towards the bottom right. And notice as well what you then do when you're hooked by all that stuff or trying to get away from it. And also notice what you are doing or could do to move towards the stuff in the bottom right. Just notice. Now I'm going to ask you a question. If you could choose, would you choose to have a life with a bit more time spent over here on the towards side and a bit less time stuck over here on the away side? Well, the good news is you can. And this tool in front of you, the ACT matrix, can help you with this. By practicing the skill of noticing, you can start to become more aware. And by becoming more aware, this can help you to start making different choices. And these choices might be tiny things at first, but the impact can be quite profound. I just want to add a quick note about this word stuck that I keep using. And let's explore that quickly now using the matrix. If we think about an away move, drinking more at a social event, it can be helpful to start to ask, is this working? Let's imagine this is one of my away moves. There are lots of ways in which it does work for me. When I drink, I might start to feel less anxious. Great. But let's just broaden things out a bit and ask, then what? Well, I might start to notice that the next day, I actually end up feeling really anxious. And I start to worry that I said something stupid and I might worry about all the things that I might have done the night before. And I also notice that I start to call myself names and this stuff is all in my bottom left. And then I notice that when I'm hooked by the thought, what if I said something stupid? I then start to avoid texts from my friends and maybe spend a day hiding under the duvet. This is in my top left. And then I'm noticing that I'm back in the bottom left, getting hooked by more thoughts like, God, you're useless. No wonder no one likes you. Can you see how I'm starting to go round and round? This is what I mean when I say stuck. Stuck in a loop where things work for a bit in the short term, but then start to come at a cost in the longer term. See if you can notice some of your stuck loops. And finally, I want to invite you to notice when you're in a stuck loop, where are you in relation to the people and things in the bottom right? Remember, getting stuck isn't your fault and it's not a sign of anything other than being human and having a mind. What you can start to do is learn to get better at noticing when you're stuck and then you can get into that middle circle. And from there, you can start to notice your bottom right and think about how you can take a step towards that, even in the face of all those tricky thoughts and feelings. Acceptance and commitment therapy, or ACT, is an approach that can help you learn ways of unhooking from unhelpful thoughts and making room for uncomfortable feelings in order that you can put your energy into connecting with the people and things that really matter to you. It's about living your life on purpose. The ACT matrix is an amazing tool to help you with all of this. Like we said at the start, it's a way of pausing, stepping back and noticing. I would encourage you to use this tool for yourself to help you start to get better at this new skill of noticing. You could also share this video with people you care about, like a friend, a partner or your children. And whenever you start to notice you're a bit stuck, congratulate yourself for noticing. Then just get a piece of paper out and draw two lines and let the magic happen. <laughs>